Welcome to Gardening Club Week 3. My name is Chantelle Helm uh, from the Cambridge University Botanic Garden Learning Team. Welcome to my garden. Today we're going to take a little bit of a walk around the garden to have a look at the things that I've tried to do to attract wildlife. My aim is to improve the garden as much as possible to get as many species to come to my garden as I possibly can. Right, when it comes to creating habitats in your garden, the best thing you can do is to provide some water. It doesn't have to be a pond, it can be a bird bath, it can be a tiny, tiny little water tub. But if you have space to create a pond, that is the best, best thing you can do for wildlife in your garden. So this is my garden pond. Um, we dug this last year. And in that one year, we already attracted some frogs as well as a lot of water boatmen, um, pond skaters, and very excitedly the other night we went and came out with a torch and shining the torch around the pond we spotted a smooth newt. So newts come into ponds in, in the springtime to breed and the best way to see them, to spot them, is to come out at night just after sunset and sort of shine a torch into the water so that you can see them. So once you have the water in your garden sorted, whether it's in the form of a pond or a tiny bird bath like this, the next thing to think about are the wildlife habitats. So for example, a log pile such as this near your pond is one of the best places to pot, put it. So the log pile provides habitat for a lot of different beetles and other insects, as well as cover for those frogs and toads that may be using your pond and other small mammals that could be about in your garden particularly even hedgehogs. It's a really exciting time of year for wildlife as everything is starting to emerge as we start warming up. Bats are emerging from hibernation, so they long sleep over the winter. So in the evenings you'll be able to listen and maybe spot them flitting about after sunset. Uh, bumblebees, queen bumblebees are emerging and looking for nest holes. Frogs and toads are spawning in your pond potentially or any water body nearby. It's a really, really a wonderful time to be out and about looking for the wildlife in your garden. This time of year, there is very little nectar and pollen for those emerging bumblebees, solitary bees and other pollinators. Hence, it's really important to try and ensure that there are wildlife friendly plants growing in your garden, providing that early nectar to those species. I have got a whole border here of naturalized grape hyacinth and muscari, which are providing a good source of nectar to a whole myriad of species. Alternatively, an easy way to provide early season nectar and pollen for the pollinators is to allow some dandelions to flower in your lawn. Try and resist the urge to mow them over when you start taking out that lawn mower. Once you've added some water to your garden and created some wildlife habitats, the next thing you can do is observe the wildlife that's present. If you're really interested, you could even learn to identify some of those species that are being attracted to your garden. There are lots of ways of doing that. The old fashioned way is to get hold of field guides that will take you through the species most likely to be found in your garden. There are also a lot of online resources that can help you identify species, including Facebook groups where a whole community of wildlife observers can come together to help you identify those species. So if you've been inspired to undertake some wildlife gardening this weekend, these are my top tips. Number one, Try and provide some water if you don't already, even if it's a small amount. Any water is better than no water. Number two, create some wildlife habitats, even if it is just allowing a small patch of your lawn to grow long. Number three, choose wildlife friendly plants. Let nature take its course and allow those dandelions to flower in your lawn. Number four, observe and enjoy. Enjoy that wildlife that is being attracted to your garden. And if you want to take things even further, Try and identify all those species that come through. Spend an endless happy hours trying to work out which species you have attracted to your garden. Well, that's it from me. Happy wildlife gardening. Next week, Sandy will be back showing us how to sow seeds outdoors. Have a wonderful weekend. Goodbye.